begin by rewinding the clock back to 1977. Okay. This was a big year for the space program because in August of that year, NASA launched a spacecraft carrying a gold record. Mm -hmm. You remember this, right? I remember. The record carried a message from us to them, our story. You know, it was Carl Sagan. The cosmos is all that is, or ever was, or ever will be. Who led the team that made the record, and that team included, actually was headed by, Annie Druyan. I visited Annie at her home in Ithaca, New York, and we sat in the backyard near a waterfall, in the same spot, she says, where Carl himself would sit, and become so absorbed in what he was reading that he would not notice a deer standing right next to him. My name is Annie Drian, and um, I was honored to be the creative director of the Voyager Interstellar Message Project, which began in early 1977. Now, how did this come about? I think about the project now, and it's so exciting to think about. I mean, it's such a romantic idea. Did you know that at the time? Absolutely. We felt, first of all, that this was a kind of sacred trust, that here we were, half a dozen very flawed human beings with uh, huge, uh, uh, huge holes in our knowledge of all of these subjects, building a cultural Noah's Ark. It was a chance to tell something of what life on Earth was like to beings of perhaps a thousand million years from now. Because the, the Voyager engineers were saying this record will have a shelf life of a billion years. If that didn't raise goosebumps, then you'd have to be made of wood. <laughs> uh, it was also the, 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 the season that Carl Sagan and I fell so madly in love with each other. And here we were taking on this mythic challenge and knowing that before it was done, two spacecraft would lift off from the planet Earth, moving at an average speed of 35,000 miles an hour for the next thousand million years. And on it would be a kiss, a mother's first words to her newborn baby. Oh, come on now. Mozart. Beethoven. Greetings in the 59 most populous human languages. Shalom. Hello from the children of planet Earth. As well as one non-human language, the greetings of the humpback whales. And it was a sacred undertaking because it was saying, we want to be citizens of the cosmos. We want you to know about us. Tell me about the moment you fell in love with Carl Sagan. You said it was during the Voyager compilation. Yes, it was. It was on June 1st, 1977. I had been looking for some time for that piece of Chinese music that we could put on the Voyager record and not feel like idiots for having done so. And um, I was very excited because I'd finally found a ethnomusicologist composer at Columbia University who told me without a moment's hesitation that this piece, Flowing Streams, which was represented to me as one of the oldest pieces of, of Chinese music, 2,500 years old, was the piece we should put on the record. So I uh, called Carl, who was traveling. He was in Tucson, Arizona, giving a talk. And um, we had been alone many times during the making of the record and as friends for three years. And neither of us had ever uh, said anything to the other. We were both involved with other people. We'd had these wonderful, soaring conversations, but we had both been completely just professional about everything and his friends. And uh, he wasn't there, left a message. Hour later, phone rings, pick up the phone, and I hear this wonderful voice. And he said, I get back to my hotel room, and I find this message, and it says, Annie called. And I say to myself, why didn't you leave me this message 10 years ago? And my heart completely skipped a beat. I can still remember it so perfectly. And I said, for keeps? And he said, you mean get married? And I said, yes. 
And we had never kissed. We had never, you know, even had any kind of personal discussion before. We both hung up the phone, and I just screamed out loud. I remember it so well, because it was this great eureka moment. It was just like a scientific discovery. And then the phone rang, and I was thinking, oh, shit, you know, like... And uh, the phone rang, and it was Carl, and he said, I just want to make sure that really happened. We're getting married, right? And I said, yeah, we're getting married. He said, okay, just wanted to make sure. And um, the spacecraft lifted off on August 20th, and August 22nd, we told everyone involved, and we were together from that moment until his death in 1996 in December. Wow, talk about romantic, my it was God. so romantic. And part of my feeling about Voyager, obviously, and part of what I was feeling in the recording of my brain waves, my heart, my eyes, everything, in that meditation on the record. I had asked Carl whether or not it would be possible to compress the impulses in one's brain and nervous system into sound and then put that sound on the record and then think that perhaps the extraterrestrials of the future would be able to reconstitute that data into thought. And he looked at me in beautiful May day in New York City and said, well, you know, a thousand million years is a long time, you know, why don't you go do it? Uh, because who knows, you know, who knows what's possible in a thousand million years? And so um, my brain waves and REM, every little sound that my body was making was recorded at Bellevue Hospital in New York. This was two days after Carl and I declared our love for each other. And so what I often think is that maybe 100 million years from now, you know, somebody flags that record down. And I always wonder, because part of what I was thinking in this meditation was about the wonder of love and of being in love and to know it's on those two spacecraft. Even now, in my, whenever I'm down, you know, I'm thinking, and still they move 35,000 miles an hour, leaving our solar system for the great wide open sea of interstellar space. <laughs> 